one second. Okay, we're ready. Okay. So we're ready, we go ahead and start. Um, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, friends. Welcome to today's events, which is part of the Visiting Artist Program of the Center for Hellenic Studies. This program it facilitates exchange between arts practitioners and researchers and supports contemporary artistic responses to ancient Greek culture. It is with great joy that I introduce today's presentation of uh, our visiting artists, Sandra Vulgari and Adriana Papanicolaou. Sandra Vulgari teaches the dances of Isadora Duncan, the mother of modern dance, who was greatly inspired by ancient Greece. She has studied at the State School of Dance in Athens since she was 12 years old, following the tradition of the Hellenic dance passed on by Kula Pratsika, a pioneer of dance in Greece and founder of the State School of Dance in Greece. Kula Pratsika was taught and greatly inspired by Eva Palmer Sikelianos and danced as a soloist in the first Delphi Games created by Angelo Sikelianos and Eva Palmer in 1927. Both the lineage of the tradition um, through Sandra's studies uh, at the State School of Dance in Athens and her studies on the dance and dance with Barbara Kane in London are the main inspiration and guide for in her work as a dancer, choreographer, and dance teacher. In the last year, Sandra and Adriana Papanicolaou a Greek dancer and teacher that has specialized in the classical Greek dance method of Ruby Jenner, created a performance named Pilgrims, Ruby Jenner meets Isadora Duncan, where both their techniques, education and experience as dance artists deeply connect to the ancient Greek culture and lineage and search for the roots of this connection aspiring to a new dance of the future where the ancient Greek spirit and ideals of beauty, grace, justice, and unity can still prevail and support humanity in its evolution. This performance is an ongoing project that aspires to connect to Eva Palmer's work and the Delphic idea and to bridge the Greek folklore and traditions through the ongoing performance of Nymphs Abodes where they research and are inspired by ancient Greek myths, archetypes, and traditional Greek fairy tales. We will start with a performance and meet again for a conversation with the artists. So please enjoy a pilgrimage, Isadora meets Ruby Jenner with Sandra Vulgari and Adriana Papanicolaou. Good morning to everyone. I am Sandra Vulgari and next to me is Andriana Papanicolaou, my collaborator in this project with title A Pilgrimage, Isadora Duncan meets Ruby Jenner, which we will be presenting to you today. It is a great joy and honor for us to be a part of the Visiting Artist Program of the Center for Hellenic Studies of the Harvard University. And before we start, we would like to thank everyone concerned who honored us with this title, especially Zoe Lafis, and of course, all other colleague artists who have already presented before us and will after us beautiful and very interesting presentations of their work.
Udah I now introduce to you Andriana Papanicolaou, a unique artist, dancer, teacher and choreographer who specializes in the revived ancient Greek dance method of Ruby Jenner, with whom we created our project, and I will be back to talk about my part as a representative of the Isadora Duncan dance. A Pilgrimage and What a Visit to Greece Means, presented by Andriana Papanicolaou. Those inspired by the dance of ancient Greece embark on a pilgrimage in search of a new meaning about the self. The dance, a journey, through the experience of the search, becomes a discovery of the self. Our 21st century quest leads us up the paths taken by the two dance pioneers and an eccentric genius, almost a century ago, who following those who came before them, discovered and revived the ancient Greek performance in their contemporary world, hoping to share a message of transformation. The ancient Greek word for pilgrimage is theoria. A pilgrim is theoros and the verb theoreo means to go on a pilgrimage to. Theori, as sacred spectators or religious sightseers, might journey to witness a festival at one of the Panhellenic sites, such as Olympia, Nemea, Delphi and the Isthmus, or just to consult an oracle. Theori might also travel to expand their worldview as in the case of Solon, who famously left Athens for the sake of Theoria. The great centers of the Hellenic world bore witness and unique testimony to the sacred pilgrimages made to them. Delphi as Omphalos, navel of the universe, was to the Greeks the center of the earth and the Delphic Oracle over which four sacred wars were fought. It was one of the focal points of Greek political history, while the theatre and the stadium, where the Pythian Games took place every four years, were places of community celebrations reflecting triumphant Hellenism. The ancient pilgrims would travel to set foot on the sacred ground of the ancient temples and sanctuaries to honor the deity and to bring honor to their home towns. The truce or Echechiria is a tradition that was established in ancient Greece in the 9th century BC to ensure a halt of all hostilities allowing the safe passage and participation of athletes and spectators who as theory were taking part in the Pan-Hellenic Games. A visit to Greece meant that the traveller, tourist, pilgrim could give their respect to the sacred site, journeying to the sacred place where the divine is accessible and can bring about a transformation in the life of the individual.
the 18th century grand tour beyond Greece and the Holy Land was a necessary component of a young aristocrat's formal education. European society was greatly influenced by classical ideas of Roman and Greek antiquities and a grand tour to Italy and Greece was developed as scholars such as Winkelmann popularized classical art by their studies of Greek and Roman architecture and art forms. Since then, Greece was a popular destination for travel and visitors would come from all over the world to pay their homage and respect to its major ancient sites. Our personal pilgrimage begins when our performing paths had begun crisscrossing as young dancers in Athens since 1991. Here we performed together in the ballet La Fille Malgardier in the Athens Experimental Ballet of Yanis Metsis. And again in 1993 in a contemporary performance of the dance group Eresis. And again in 1996 in the Chorica Dance Company of Suzu Nicoludi. And finally in 2020 with our unique collaboration, a coincidence that we could never imagine could happen 24 years before. As our teachers and their teachers before them pass these dance methods on to us, we represent their living legacy in the land that gave birth to their art. We are the only recognized Greek performers and teachers of these dance forms living and teaching in Greece. We are, in turn, passing our knowledge onto our students. Our performance is based on their imaginary meetings in nature and of their dance. The spirit of ancient Greece is the inspiration that imbued the two seekers, Isadora Duncan and Ruby Jinnah, after their own personal pilgrimage to Greece, giving rise to their life's work.
How Isadora Duncan was inspired by Greece, presented by Sandra Vulgari. First of all, I would like to speak about Isadora Duncan, the great pioneer of modern dance, and how her work was inspired by ancient Greece, as this was the connection between me and Andriano when creating our pilgrimage. To bring life again to the ancient ideal, I do not mean to say copy it, imitate it, but to breathe its life, to recreate it in oneself with personal inspiration, to start from its beauty and then go forward toward the future, wrote Isadora Duncan in The Art of Dance in 1896. It is well known that Isadora Duncan, the great pioneer of modern dance, was greatly influenced and inspired by ancient Greece. In the summer of 1899, when she arrived with her family to London, then aged 22, she immersed herself every day for four months in the vast holdings of the British Museum. And then later in Paris, she spent hours and days at the Louvre with her brother Raymond Duncan, studying the museum's collection of Greek vases and their iconography. Duncan recalls in her autobiography, My Life, that Raymond sketched every red or black-figured vessel in that collection, and then Isadora danced from their inspired images while Raymond photographed her. It was their self-proclaimed mission to attune themselves to the ancient Greek sensibility its aesthetic and ethos. In the summer of 1903, the Duncan family fulfilled their big dream, packing their bags to travel to Greece. Retracing the route of Ulysses, the Duncan set out for Athens, traveling at times by carriage, fishing boat, and on foot. Their dream was to remain in Athens eternally, and there build a temple of dance. Forever turned out to last only one year, at least for Isadora. The Duncans found the perfect site for their temple home, a hill called Kopanos in today's Veronas in Athens, where the Isadora and Raymond Duncan Research Center is housed nowadays. They began to build immediately, but in their haste they didn't realize there was no water to be found. Many months of unsuccessful digging drained the Duncan's funds, and Isadora had to leave to continue her touring across Europe. Raymond and his wife Penelope remained for a while, hoping to create a utopian colony, living in an entirely natural existence, raising goats for the hair and milk, spinning and weaving their own clothing and supporting the local community, expressing likewise the deep humanitarian ideal that the Duncans gifted to the world. Isadora Duncan's inspiration from the Greek spirit, not in imitation, but in true connection with it, is a central part of our project, Pilgrimage with Andriana Papanicolaou. As Isadora herself wrote in a letter published in 1920 in the Progrès d'Athènes, which is included in the Art of Dance essays. Like every artist of our time, I have been inspired by Greek art, since it is the foundation of all our Western culture. Certainly it is true that in a period of 16 years I have gone eight times to Greece, and that I remain there each time as long as my economic circumstances permitted, for to live in Greece is to know the very source of beauty, the inspiration of my art, but that is far from saying that I wish to revive the ancient dances. To revive the antique dances would be a task as impossible as it would be useless. The dance, to be an art for us, must be born out of ourselves, out of the emotions in the life of our times, just as the old dances were born of the life and the emotions of ancient Greeks. 
To be sure, in my youth I spent long hours of enthusiastic admiration before the Parthenon, before the friezes, the frescoes, the vases, the Tanagra figures, but that was not as a step toward copying either the attitudes or the excellencies of those masterpieces. On the contrary, I studied them so long in order to steep myself in the spirit underlying them, in order to discover the secret of the ecstasy in them, putting myself in touch with the feelings their gestures symbolized. Thus, in taking my soul back to the mystic sources of their rapture, I have on my own part found again the secret of beauty that resides in that holy of holies. Out of that has come my dancing, neither Greek nor antique, but the spontaneous expression of my soul, lifted up by beauty. Andriana Papanicolaou will present The Ginna Moore School of Dance and Drama Performs in Greece. By following the paths of both Isadora Duncan and Ruby Ginna, we found that they presided in the same places, in the same museums, and made many trips to Greece, but never actually met. As a child, Ruby Ginna, growing up in London, ten years younger than Isadora, played many juvenile dramatic roles under the direction of Elsie Fogarty and Frank Benson, in whose drama company Isadora, just a few years before, in her trip to London at the turn of the 20th century, was a part of. Whilst working with Fogarty on Greek choruses, Ruby Jenner began her own research in the Greek galleries of the British Museum, searching for the missing links, as she called them, hoping to discover the lost ancient art of Greek dance. In preparation for her choreographic debut for the opera Orpheus in 1910. After founding her own dance company called the Grecian Dancers in 1914, together with Irene Moore, she established the Ginna Moore School of Dance and Drama in London a year later. Irene Moore was her lifelong friend and collaborator and taught the art of mime and drama at the school. In 1927, Isadora was killed by that tragic accident and did not live to perform at the first Delphic festival in Greece that year. It was three years after Isadora's passing that the Ginna Moore School of Dance and Drama was invited by the organizers of the second Delphic festival to perform in Athens. Ruby Jenner writes in her book, The Technique of the Revived Greek Dance, published after the event. In 1930, Irene Moore and I were invited by the directors of the Delphic Festival to take a company to Athens to perform in the ancient theater from many of the Jenner Moore students and from members of the Greek Dance Association we made up a company of 47 performers and our program of dance and mime was met with an overwhelming success from a critical Athenian audience. The company danced at the Olympia Theatre in Athens, presenting ancient Greek themes to the music of Mussorgsky and Chopin under the orchestral direction of Dimitris Mitropoulos and was recorded in an article of the Greek newspaper The Eleftero Vima on the 28th of April 1930. Another performance was given at the Odeon of Herodes Atticus. An article about this performance was written by Ioannis Psaroudas on the 2nd of May 1930. By then the Greek Dance Association had been chartered and dance examinations were being held in London thus sending forth teachers all over England and the Commonwealth, mainly in South Africa, 
where I was taught by my teacher Patricia Clancy and she in turn by her teacher Poppin Salomon. Ruby Jenner's revived Greek dance known today as classical Greek dance and found under the auspices of the ISTD, the Imperial Society of Teachers of Dance in London, drew on athletics, drama and dance with an allegiance to ancient Greek ideals. The movements arranged by Jinnah originated from the artifacts which she found in the museums as she based her study on the dancing figures from the ancient Greek arts. From the static position, she then had to use her imagination to realize the movement that came before the pose and the movement following the pose, and then had to create the quality and the speed of the movement from position to position. Also, she had to discover the life of the ancient Greeks by reading their literature and knowing their history. Her method explores various qualities such as lyrical, athletic, bacchic, pyrrhic, tragic and choric. The use of props such as spears, swords and shields, symbols, timbres and thirsi are a major feature of the work aiding the actor's training for the stage. Sandra Vulgari will present a direct link to the Delphic Festival. Last summer, Andriana and I had the most wonderful invitation and chance to present a part of our performance of Pilgrims at Delphi as guests of the festival for the reinstatement of the Delphic Games that Jean Bresciani has been organizing the last years in collaboration with the municipality of Delphi. It was an extraordinary in its beauty and sacredness evening to dance in front of the house of the famous Greek poet Angelos Sikelianos, who in 1927 with his wife Eva Palmer revived the Delphic Games. Delphi had from the beginning of our project been the ideal place where we believe our pilgrimage, homage to Isadora Duncan and Ruby Jenner should begin and we hope in the near future to be able to present in Delphi our full performance and workshop that accompanies it. Dancing and staying even for a few hours in Delphi was enough to ignite the flame and memory of Greek dancers and artists who had worked for the revival of the Delphic Games in the 1930s, and to of course notice the deep connection to our project considering that Ruby Jenner had been in the audience of the Delphic Games and Isadora Duncan had visited Delphi a few years before. It is very important to mention here that amongst the young dancers that were taught by Eva Palmer so as to participate in the Delphic Games was Kula Pratsika, the later founder of the State School of Dance in Athens, where I have studied and where Andriana has taught so many connections. Kula Pratsika and many of her students, among them Ralumanu, Zuzu Nicoludi and Maria Hors, were the inventors of the new Greek dance which was born in the 1930s, a precious heritage handed down to generations to come, leading to today's rich and diverse Greek contemporary dance scene. Kula Pratsika, though mainly a student of the German Expressionist school of Mary Wigman, Rosalia Kladek, and also of Dal Crows and Orff, talked about the importance and the influence of Isadora Duncan's work to her teachers and her generation of artists. In her memoir, she remembers that in 1906 she was six years old and Isadora Duncan had already come to Greece. Her revolutionary work, inspired by ancient Greek ideals, as she mentions, greatly influenced the techniques and methods of dancing and teaching which she would be taught during her studies in Germany and Switzerland. Walking in the footsteps of Isadora Duncan and Ruby Jenner suddenly felt 
as if many more inspired and important dancers, teachers and choreographers who had been influenced by these women pioneers throughout the years were walking with us, tracing a path to the present and the future. Our work became even more meaningful and essential to be shared, as if the spirit of all those artists who strive through their art for a better world, where true beauty, grace and love can prevail, were guiding us. Andriana Papanikolaou will present the value the Jinnah Method has today and a small excerpt from the performance The Pilgrimage Hymn to the Muse by Mesomedes of Crete 130 AD danced and choreographed by Andriana Papanikolaou and interpreted by Stelios Psaroudakis We all know that without a doubt of the universality of Hellenic learning and of its ideas, knowledge, philosophy, arts and sciences placed all things as playing their part in the web of life, contributing to the whole. Even though the ancient people had as many faults as we have today, their legacy left to the Western world remains unsurpassed. The Benefits of Classical Greek Dance Natural movement that promotes safe practice, rhythmic and expressive bass giving underlying meaning to all gesture, pose and form, a progressive practice core working the fundamental movements of the body in an alternation of tension and relaxation, a range of expressive movement qualities, a theoretical study which encompasses the full range of Hellenic learning, a contemporary dance form for the theatre and remedial therapy. In her handbook for teachers and students, Ruby Jenner closes with the following words. It has developed in many directions and gradually more technical exercises, movements, steps and designs have been added. Choreographers and dancers now use this art for the expression of ideas other than those derived from Greek art and myths. Its movements are adaptable to the portrayal of the life and activities of the present day world. Those who study and practice it find it to have a breadth, freedom and variety of movement that enables them to express almost any range of ideas, though still remaining true to its original aesthetic and technical inspiration. All those who have worked indefatigably through the years to carry on those ideas for which we aim in art and education Ideals which had their birth in the temples, theatres, stadia and academies of ancient Hellas. My method of Greek dance has survived the impact of two world wars with all the loss and struggle those years brought and thus its value is proven. My own pilgrimage to Greece from South Africa and my decision to live in Athens to develop my art is driven by the need to establish a school for the Ruby Jinnah method in Greece, but also to set the foundations of an academy for the ancient Greek performing arts. Currently, I am teaching at the Kalihoro, new ancient dance center and historical cultural dance school under the direction of Ariavni Nano in Athens. Aide moussa mu pile, mol pez de mes gatarku, aure de son apal seon, e mas prenas donito. Oh, I don't 
Sandra Volgari will present my experience as a modern Duncan dancer and Tanagra figures, an excerpt from the performance A Pilgrimage, original choreography by Isadora Duncan, danced by Sandra Volgari. Speaking on how Isadora Duncan's work has impacted modern and contemporary dance, I would like to share some experiences of my work as a dancer, teacher and choreographer living and working in the 21st century in Greece. From the beginning when I first met Barbara Kay and my teacher in Duncan Dance in the 90s, 1990s in London, but also later on as I evolved as a dancer and teacher on my return to Greece, Continuing to study Duncan's dances with Barbara Kane, I never stopped being stunned with amazement at the simplicity, the purity, the complete relevance of her work to the needs of our modern world. This was not an old-fashioned, outdated way of dancing, as many would mention to me when I tried to persuade them to include Duncan dance in their school curriculum, but a revolutionary heritage, bringing us back to the beauty of the human body and connecting us to the soul in turbulent times. A most gentle but so powerful way to dance which frees you as a dancer. I had the honor and joy to teach for four years at the Duncan Center in Athens and I am grateful and happy that with the support of Penelope Liascu, artistic director of the center, a place for Duncan teacher was created. Sadly, Duncan dance is not taught anymore at the Duncan Center. I was in charge of the very young toddler and parents group as an introduction to Duncan dance and also a group of beginner adults and children. The Duncan Center houses the Municipal School of Dance of Veronas and a very busy program of classical, contemporary, hip-hop, Latin and Greek dancing. So apparently there were no hours free to create Duncan dance groups and that, furthermore, despite two performances we presented with the students and also a film that was produced by the French channel Arte in 2020, there seemed to be no interest for Duncan dance. Isadora couldn't find the water needed to create her temple of dance in Veronas, and now in 2020 the land still seemed barren to host her work. Nevertheless, many famous Duncan teachers come as guests and the center has been involved in some wonderful research work. To be a Duncan dance teacher in Greece means you will live through poverty, working in other jobs to survive and having to often explain who Isadora Duncan is and why it would be wonderful to include her dance in schools. I passed through many phases of joy dancing and teaching Duncan dance at the Duncan Center 
and in other venues which showed a genuine interest, and I am glad that my students also shared my enthusiasm for Duncan Dance, which is gradually getting known in Greece and that is very hopeful. And here I would like to share the news of an important network of contemporary women dancers named Fault Lines Dance Work, of which I am a member, created two years ago by the British dancer and choreographer Hayley Matthews. Its members are professional women dancers from UK and other countries around the world who dance outdoors in nature, are trying to establish a new kind of revolutionary gift economy and amongst others take their inspiration from Isadora Duncan and her dances which are included in the evolving repertory of the group. What more proof than this to show how deeply Isadora Duncan can speak to contemporary dancers? I would say that the difficulties and the joyful moments have only made me more sure of one thing. Apart from a way of dancing, teaching, creating dance, Duncan dance is a way to live, to love, to be. It doesn't really matter where it is taught, and if it will continue to be taught at the Duncan Center, though, that would really be wonderful if it did. Perhaps the obstacles are leading us to new ways, new approaches, new venues. For me, Duncan Dance is the dance of love, beauty and freedom, open to all people of all ages and abilities, and that is my dream, to bring it into community dance. That is what makes it in my eyes so special, contemporary and essential, and that is our decision with Andriana Papanicolaou and our deepest message with our project performance of Pilgrims and also with our vision of creating an academy where Isadora Duncan's dance and Ruby Ginner's method would connect with all the arts and create a school for people to learn and love and dance, to spread the love to spread the dance as a prayer for peace and kindness, to spread beauty through art and dance so as to create a better world. This for sure is the dance of the future. Thank you.
Thank you very much for this presentation. Um, okay, it's very hard <laughs> to talk after the performance. You all know. This. Um, so, what I want to say because time is precious, we have about oh a few minutes, ten or so minutes proper, and then those of us who would like to stay can for a few longer. But I wanted to say a big thank you to you artists, our visiting artists uh, today, Sandra Vulgari, Adriana Papanicolaou, thank you so much for actually, with, through your performance, sort of bridging time and, bring, and making this moment, this hour sort of timeless, bridging a century or even more than that, um, a range of centuries and um, just focusing us on our humanity, our human bodies, our environment where these bodies move and the sounds through which we move. But it, this was just, it just gave us a beautiful sense of, uh, thank you for introducing us to Ruby Jenner and Isadora Duncan in this kind of timeless moment. Um, I, uh, there's so much to be said I, um, and maybe I'd like to, just make sure that any of us among the audience would like, if you have anything you'd like to share, uh, it would be wonderful to do. And perhaps uh, Adriana and uh, Sandra, if you'd like to just um, let us hear your voice for a moment. So uh, I see Nina Alcale. Uh, Nina, you may, uh, let's see, how can we unmute uh, you? Dear Ali, can we, I think, oh, there you go. Okay, thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the two presenters for their beautiful visual material. 
and I think that personally I'm uh, most mostly familiar with the work and life of Duncan, but less so with the Ruby Jenner. Uh, so I would like to ask uh, the two presenters, according to their opinion, what is the common point uh, between the two women, uh, technically and educationally speaking? Sandra, do you want to, my sweetheart, um, or should I? Thank you for being here today. Our Thank pilgrimage you, hoped, our pilgrimage and our collaboration hoped to show the common uh, point from which they both were inspired. And of course, that is ancient Greek art, ancient, the ancient Greek spirit. And hopefully through the presentation, we were trying to uh, show that, that common point of, uh, of the instigation of their creation, the, their work. Of course, what we found, Nina, and it's so fantastic, uh, looking into that part that those uh, first years of the 20th century, from the 1900s to the Delphic Games, it's about 30 years, where we do have a, a First World War, which is quite incredible to see how these people at that time were traveling um, and and to Greece and back and to Paris and to and um, uh, the, the traveling that they were doing. This is why we called it a pilgrimage. But their 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 um, searching in the museums, the British Museum, the Louvre, the Athens Museum. We we knew we know that uh, Isadora and her brother and Eva Sikelianos were visiting the National Museum in Athens, which is quite a walk from Kopanos <laughs> to Patisian Street. And they would be walking and uh, our, our, our fantastic eccentric uh, Raymond, who we're all forgetting to mention, who really is the, the central, uh, uh, he was the inspirer to all these people how uh, he would walk down in his uh, in his tunic and the young children would follow him and uh, I've forgotten the English word would follow him and uh, it was Penelope Sikelianos, his wife who who sort of there's a there's a um, there's a passage in Eva Sikelianos book about this moment where uh, Penelope raises her voice in Greek and chases the young Greek children away because they were uh, ridiculing this uh, genius who I consider a genius. Now, what, uh, what Raymond does is he um, inspires through his teaching. Um, and we didn't have enough time to show his work. It seems that his work was, it has remained in Ruby Jenner's method through um, Margaret Morris. And that all these paths are crisscrossing in these 30 years and they're all inspiring each other to create these um, methods of dance. So this is how, this is what uh, keeps, what inspires them. The, the, they're traveling, <laughs> the traveling, it's, it's incredible. And the, the meeting, meet, and the and their pathway, yes. yes. Their pathway seemed to be fine. Like one was going and coming, and also they were very inspired by nature and the rhythms of nature. Yes. I think that also. This is why we used some sounds from nature in Tanagra's, uh, Sandra's little piece. We use the sounds of nature in meetings where we meet and dance. We, we couldn't show all the whole performance, I'm sorry about that, but. Um, um, and also so, there are many, sorry to interrupt, many differences which yes. are interesting because they complete each other and that's the, the lovely thing we found, I think, that we had so much in common but also we were completing each other in different senses. I don't know what you think, Adriana. Yes, complementing. Complementing, yes. Yes. A ruby oh, Yes, sorry. No, no. Well, the second question was in case somebody would like to, to reach out to you for future seminars or lectures, how can one uh, 
uh, you know, yes, get in contact should, with you. Could we put yeah. our mail in the chat, our mails in the chat? Yeah. And you could, we're very uh, happy yeah. to, we're both working in Greece, which is, okay. as yeah. uh, Sandra uh, comments in the last part of her presentation, um, it's, it's, we're still at the beginning. And this is what is so sad. <laughs> you know, after a century, after these fantastic Delphi games, after wonderful artists like Barbara Kane and, um, and many, many others, uh, that in Greece, we still feel that we're at the beginning. We still need to educate the Greek um, population about Isadora Duncan. We still need to talk to them about Ruby Jenner's work. And uh, we've, we're, we're actually in, in difficulties here, but we're going to insist. <laughs> we're going to insist because we believe in the, um, in, in what, in the, um, in, in what these methods of dance have to um, give and serve in education. So uh, we, we have to insist and we have to keep on going as, as much as we can and we need all the support we can get. That's true. That's true. I just add a little <laughs> note to you both. Sorry, it's Barbara here. Um, you too, from what I've seen of the film from Delphi, seeing you two working together and with this film today, you present such a calm beauty as well. I don't think you mentioned that in your speaking, but there's a calmness that you give people, which I think really beautiful. So bravo, both of you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Barbara. We, we presented the lyrical quality because there's also another side of Greek, ancient Greek, uh, Greece, and that is the tragic part and the Bacchic part, which is also in our performance. And we found that both Sandra, um, both Isadora Duncan and the Ruby Jinna method uh, work over a range of um, emotions and a range of movement, right from that beautiful calmness that you mentioned, mm -hmm. the lyrical quality right through to the very dramatic um, in tragedies and the Bacchic uh, Dionysian work mm -hmm. that you saw me with the thyrsus, but when the thyrsus moves and swings around, <laughs> it becomes <laughs> quite dramatic and quite... Uh, but uh, Sandra also had wonderful Bacchic, Bacchanal work to show and the tragic work. So what is lovely about both the methods is that they are alive today through great teachers right up to our moment mm -hmm. we have um we have dance methods which we can teach we can start with the youngest child right up to uh, giving diplomas for teachers so this is what is wonderful about it and um it's not just the work is not just um we see many um, looking for the ancient Greek dance, but really don't not doing it through a, a base of technique, dance technique, which we are, we can, we can produce a dance technique. Um, four positions of the feet, 32 positions of the arms, uh, movements through space, um, which skips and runs and leaps. So this is what's wonderful about these methods and thank goodness so we have a we have a lot of uh, support through the methods yes very well wonderful thank you um i i would like to add that it is it's it's a joy and a treat to be able to see this performance today uh i know that the the experience of a live performance is, is just so moving. And Barbara, you are so right. The, the performance that uh, Sandra and Adriana uh, gave in Delphi this past summer uh, just brought the two together. And, and so I do hope, uh, I do hope, I do wish that um, these uh, live performances will continue to, to happen and, and there will be a cycle and, and that this 
the, the, that this um, that your work continues and and sees uh, a lot of light and good progress, and uh, that we join you in this um, uh, in this pilgrimage movement in some way, you know, like in this parodos uh, towards a yes. festival um, or towards festivals. Yes, it, would, it would be lovely, yes, to see everyone in Delphi and to produce the whole performance. <laughs> it would be wonderful to do the whole performance in Delphi. That that would be our dream. And also, I'd, I would like to mention that the music heard by uh, Professor Stelios Psarubakis, he, he gave it to us as a gift and we thank him very much. Uh, a, a great uh, um, uh, musicologist in Greece who's, uh, who has been uh, teaching ancient Greek music at the National um, University in Athens, the Kapodistrian University. And um, we hope with him that we will, and with many people, that we will um, continue to 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 create the work, to, cre to create the academy, which we hope we can. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here with us and for seeing our work. Very good. Thank, thank you, you for being with us. I should like, I would like to add, please take a look at the chat. There are some good comments there, Mrs. Kreku. Um, and, and so we will be saving the chat um, and for you and also, we, we did add your email addresses there um, for you. those who would like immediate access to it. Of course, we at the Center for Hellenic Studies remain at your disposal and um, uh, so that we can uh, um, continue to, to, to enjoy enjoy the work of, uh, of Sandra and uh, Adriana and, and in the different projects. Uh, so I, I hope that this is sort of a good benchmark, a good stand in a, in, in a long passage and that there will be good continuations. You are kind of renewing the cycle on this day. Um, and we are, let's, let's, um, let's continue to stay in touch. I'd love to hear the good networks that you are doing and hopefully we can all continue to enjoy that and join them as, as you know, as we can. So. Thank you so much. And for everyone watching us, who took the time to come here. Beautiful. Thank you for coming today. Thank you so much. It's been a great support and to Zoe and Ali, thank you so much for inviting us to the Center of Hellenic Studies. It's a great help. Beautiful. Great help. It is thank the pleasure you so much. is ours. The pleasure is ours. And so look for the this this session is being recorded. It will be available in our YouTube channel soon. Um, and in time. And, and, and thanks to Ali. And also Olivia, who is joining us here today, and, 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 and um, Olivia Henderson, Ali Marbury, they making it all this come together. Just a good, another co good collaboration. So please watch for the YouTube channel. Let's stay in touch. Uh, and um, thank you for starting the month of April with us in such a beautiful, inspiring way. So thank you. <laughs> happy spring. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>